from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Hi and welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2020, the Europe virtual edition. Of course, Kubernetes won the container wars as we went from managing just a few containers to managing clusters to today many customers managing multiple clusters and that can get more complicated. So to help understand those challenges and how uh, solutions are being put out to solve them, happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Joe Fitzgerald. He is the Vice President and General Manager of the Management Business Unit at Red Hat. Joe, good to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Stu, thanks for having me back. All right, so at Red Hat Summit, uh, one of the interesting conversations you and I had was talking about advanced cluster management or ACM. Of course, that was some people and some technology that came over to Red Hat from IBM post acquisition. So it was tech preview. Give us the update, what's the news, and you know, just level set for the, the, the audience, uh, you know, what, what advanced cluster management is. Sure, so advanced cluster manager or ACM as we affectionately call it, um, basically is a way to manage multiple clusters across even different environments, right? As people have adopted Kubernetes and you know, we now have several thousand customers running OpenShift, um, and they're starting to push it in some very, very big ways. And so what they run into is uh, as they scale, they need better ways to manage and automate those environments. And ACM is, is a huge um, way to help them manage those environments. It was early availability back at Summit at the end of April, and in just a few months now, it's generally available, and we're super excited about that. Well, that, that's, congratulations on moving that from technical preview to general availability so fast. Uh, what, what can you tell us? How, how many customers have you had use this? Uh, what, what have you learned in talking to them uh, about this solution? So first of all, we were really pleasantly surprised by the amount of people that were interested in the tech preview. You know, tech preview is not you know, a product that's you know, ready to use in production yet. So a lot of times accounts are not interested and they want to wait for the production version. We had over 100 customers in our tech preview across uh, not only geographies, you know, all over the world, in Asia, Latin America, Europe, and the US, across all different verticals. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of interest in it. And I think that just shows um, you know, how uh, applicable it is to these environments that people are trying to manage. So tremendous amount of uptake. We got some great feedback. Uh, from that, and in just a few months, we incorporated that feedback into the now generally available product. So, great uptake uh, during the uh, tech preview period. Excellent. But bring us inside a little bit. You know, when would I use this solution? If I just have a single cluster, does it make sense for me? Uh, is, is it only for multi clusters? You know, what, what, what's the applicability of, of the offering? Yeah, so even for single clusters, the, the things that um, ACM really does fall into three major areas, right? Uh, it allows cluster lifecycle management. Of course, that would you know, mean that you have more than one cluster. Um, and as people grow, they do for a number of reasons. Um, also policy-based management, the ability to uh, enforce config policies and enforce compliance across even your single cluster to make sure that it stays uh, perfect in terms of uh, settings and configuration and things like that. And the other is application lifecycle management, the ability to deploy applications um, in a more advanced way, even if you're on a single cluster. It gets even better if you're multi-cluster because you can deploy your apps to just the clusters that are tagged a certain way, but lots of capabilities even for application deployment, even in a single cluster. So we find even people that are running a single cluster need it. Um, as you deploy more and more clusters, you're definitely going to need it. That's great. Any, you mentioned you had feedback from customers. What, what are the things that I guess would be the biggest pain points that this solves for them uh, that they were struggling with in the past? Well, first of all, being able to sort of federate the management multiple clusters, right, as opposed to having to manage each cluster individually. Uh, the ability to do policy-based uh, configuration management to just express the way you want things to stay and have them stay that way. Um, to adopt more of a GitOps methodology in terms of how they're managing their, their OpenShift environments. Um, there was lots more feedback, but those were some of the ones that seemed to be fairly uh, common and repetitive across the customer base. Yeah, and, and you know, Joe, you, you've also got the automation in the management suite. How do I think about this? How does this fit into um, the, the broader management automation that customers are using? Well, I think as people you know, deploy these environments, I know there's a lot of conversation about you know, the platform, right? But there's a lot of things that have to go with the platform and Red Hat's actually been very good about that in terms of providing 
all the things you necessary that you would find necessary to make the platform successful in your environment. Right. So obviously you need the platform, but you need the storage and the development environments, the management, the automation, uh, the uh, you know ability to uh, get trained on it. We have our open innovation labs. There's lots of things that are beyond the platform that people require in order to be successful. In the case of management and automation, ACM is a huge uh, advancement in terms of how to manage these environments, but we're not done. We're going to continue to add more uh, automation, uh, integration with things like Ansible, more integration with uh, observability and analytics. Um, so we're far from done, but we want to make sure that OpenShift stays the best managed environment that's out there. I also do want to make a call out to the fact that, you know, this team has been working on this technology for the past couple of years. And so only, even though it's only been at Red Hat for five months, this technology is actually very mature. But it, it is quite an accomplishment uh, for any company to take a new team and a new technology and in five months uh, do what Red Hat does to it in terms of making it uh, consumable for the enterprise. So big kudos to the team. They really knocked it out of the park. Well, and, and I know a piece of that is, uh, you know, moving that along to be open source. So, you know, wh where, where are we with the solution now that is BA? How, how does that fit into it being open source? Yeah, so, so parts of it are open sourced already, and we're in the process of open sourcing the rest of it. Um, as you've seen over time, Red Hat has a, a you know, perfect record here of acquiring technologies that were either completely closed source, open core in some cases, where part of it was open, part of it was closed. That, that was the case with Ansible a few years ago. Um, but basically, our strategy is everything has to be open source. Uh, that takes time. We're in the process of going through all of the um, processes necessary to open source the parts of ACM. Uh, and we think that we'll find lots of interest in the community um, around the different projects inside of ACM. Yeah, uh, how about one, one of the bigger concerns to talking to customers in general about Kubernetes, if even more in 2020 is, what, what about security? How, do, how does ACM uh, help customers make sure that their environments are secure? Yeah, so you know, configuration uh, policies and enforcing, uh, you can actually set with ACM that you want things to be a certain way. If somebody changes them, they will automatically either warn you about them or enforce them, in other words, set them back. Um, so it's got some very strong security chops in terms of keeping the configurations just the way you want. Um, that gets harder as you get more and more clusters. Imagine trying to keep everything with the same levels of you know, settings, the software, and every, you know, all the parts and pieces. Um, so the fact that you have ACM that can do this across any and all of your clusters uh, really takes the burden off uh, people trying to maintain secure environments. Okay, and so generally available now, uh, anything you can share about how this solution is priced, how it fits into kind of the broader OpenShift offerings? Yeah, so, so it's an add-on for OpenShift. Uh, it's priced very similarly to OpenShift in terms of the um, you know, you know, uh, core pricing. Um, one thing I do want to mention about ACM, which maybe doesn't come out you know, just by a description of the product, is the fact that ACM was built from scratch for Kubernetes environments and optimized for OpenShift. We're seeing a lot of competition out there that's taking products that were built for other environments and trying to sort of bend them or coerce them into you know, managing Kubernetes environments. Uh, we don't think people are going to be successful at that. They haven't been successful to date. So one of the things that we, we find as sort of a competitive differentiator uh, for ACM in the market is the fact that it was built from scratch, designed for Kubernetes environments. Uh, so it is, really well designed for the environment it's trying to manage. And we think that's going to keep a you know, competitive edge. Well, always, Joe, when you, you have a, a newer architecture, you can take advantage of things. Uh, any examples that you have as to what, what a new architecture like this can do that, that an older architecture might struggle with or not fully be able to do, even though when you look at the product sheet, um, the words sound similar, but when you get underneath the covers, uh, it, it's just not a good architectural fit. Yeah, so it's very similar to sort of the, the shift from physical to virtual. You can't have a paradigm shift in the infrastructure and not have a sort of a corresponding paradigm shift in the management tooling. Um, so the way you monitor these environments, the way you secure them, the way they scale and expand, uh, the way you do resource management, security, all those things are vastly different in this environment compared to let's say a virtual environment or physical environment. Um, so this has been proved many times in the past. You know, paradigm shift in the infrastructure or the application environment will drive a commensurate paradigm shift in the management. And that's what you're seeing here. So that's why we thought it was super important to have management that was built for these environments by design. So it's not trying to do sort of unnatural uh, things in order to manage the environment. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering, Joe, I'd love to hear just a little bit, 
your, your philosophy as to what's needed in this space. You know, I look back to previous generations, look at virtualization. Uh, you know, Microsoft did very well at managing their environment. VMware did the same for their environments. Um, but you know, you know, we've we've had generations of times where solutions have tried to be management of everything, and and that can be challenging. So, you know, what what's Red Hat and ACM's position, and what, what do we need in the Kubernetes space? You know, today and, and for the next couple of years. So Kubernetes itself is an automation platform. You talked about it, you know, early on in, in the segment. Uh, so, you know, Kubernetes itself provides, you know, a lot of automation around container management. What ACM does is build on top of that and then capture, you know, data and events and configuration uh, items in the environment and then allows you to define policies. Uh, people want to move away from manual processes, certainly, but they want to be able to get to a more stateful expression of the way things should be. They want to be able to use more of a, you know, sort of a GitOps, you know, kind of philosophy where they can say, this is how I want things to be. I want to check the version in. I want to keep it at that level. If it changes, put it back. Tell me about it. Um, but sort of the era of chasing, uh, you know, management with people is changing. Uh, you're seeing a huge premium now on automation. So automation at all levels. And I think this is where ACM's automation on top of OpenShift automation um, and down the road, uh, combined with things like Ansible, will provide the most automated environment you can have for these container platforms. Um, so it's definitely changing. You're seeing observability, AI ops, GitOps type of philosophies coming in. These are very different than the management in the past. Um, so you're seeing innovation across the whole management landscape in the Kubernetes environment because they are so different. The physics of them are different than the previous environments. We think with ACM, Ansible, our Insights product, and some of our analytics, that we've got the right thing for this environment. And can you give us a little bit of a look forward? You know, how often should we expect to see updates on this? Uh, of course, you, you mentioned getting feedback from the community, uh, from the techno pre preview to GAs. So give us a little bit of a look, you know, what should we be expecting to see from ACM down the road? The, the line. So the ACM team is far from done, right? So they're going to continue to rev, you know, just like we rev OpenShift at a very, very fast pace. We're going to be revving ACM at a fast pace. Uh, also, you're going to see a lot of integration between ACM and a lot of the partners we're already working with in the application monitoring space and in the um, analytics space, um, security, uh, automation. Uh, I would expect to see in the Ansible Fest timeframe, which is mid-October, you'll see some integration with Ansible and ACM around the things that Ansible does very well, combined with um, what ACM does. Um, ACM will continue to push out on more uh, you know, cluster management, more policy-based management, and certainly advancing the application life cycles that people are very interested in uh, moving faster. They want to move faster with a higher degree of certainty in their application deployments, and ACM is right there. I guess final question for you, Joe, is, you know, just in the broader space, looking at management uh, in this kind of KubeCon, cloud native con ecosystem, final words you want customers to understand where we are today and, and where we need to go uh, down the road. So I think the, you know, the market and the industry has decided Kubernetes is the platform of the future, right? And certainly, you know, we were one of the earliest to invest in container management platforms with OpenShift. We were one of the first to invest in Kubernetes. We have thousands of customers running OpenShift right across all industries. Uh, and geographies. Uh, so we bet on that a long time ago. Now we're betting on the management automation of those environments and bringing them to scale. And the other thing I think that Red Hat is unique on is that you know, we think that people are going to want to run their Kubernetes environments across all different kinds of environments, whether it's on-premise, physical and virtual, multiple public clouds where we have offerings, as well as at the edge, right? So this is going to be an environment that's going to be very, very uh, ubiquitous, uh, pervasive, um, deployed at scale. And so the management automation is going to become a necessity. And so Red Hat is investing right, in the right areas to make sure that um, enterprises can use Kubernetes, particularly OpenShift, in, the, in all the environments that they want at the scale they want. All right, excellent. Well, Joe, I know we'll be catching up with you and your team for Ansible Fest uh, coming in the fall. Thanks so much for the updates. Congratulations to you and the team on the rapid progression of ACM now being GA. Thanks, Stu, appreciate it. We'll see you soon. All right, and stay tuned for more coverage from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2020 in Europe, the virtual edition. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks as always for watching theCUBE.